before I do my exhortation this morning, look at Romans 5, 17. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Amen? For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ or through one person, Jesus Christ. You can switch over to New King James now. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Um, how many of us have received this abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness? How many of us? How many people here? How many people here? Raise your hand if you're raising If you're not sure, you keep it down. If you're saved, you qualify. And the Bible said you shall reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Can we stand to our feet? I want us to reign this morning. Declare to yourself, I reign in this life. We are waiting for some people to stand safe. Can you lift up your hand and say, I reign in this life through Jesus Christ. Say it again. I reign in this life through Jesus Christ. Like you mean it, I reign in this life through Jesus Christ. I've received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. For God made Jesus to be seen who knew no sin. That I may be made his righteousness. In Christ Jesus. And the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, I reign in this life. Through Jesus Christ. I reign over Satan. Through Jesus Christ. I reign over demons. Through Jesus Christ. Yes, I reign over Satan. For it is written, I shall resist the devil. In the name of Jesus, and he will flee from me. I reign in this life over the devil through Jesus Christ. I resist the devil in the name of Jesus, and he flees from me. I reign over demons in the name of Jesus Christ. For Jesus has given me authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm me. I reign in this life over demons. I'm a believing one. These signs follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out devils. In the name of Jesus, I cast out devils. I speak with new tongues. I pick up serpents. And if I drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm me. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. I reign in this life over demons through Jesus Christ. I have dominion over demons through Jesus Christ. I reign in this life through Jesus Christ over sin. For sin shall not have dominion over me for not under the law but under grace. Say it again. I reign in this life over sin. For sin shall not have dominion over me for not under the law but under grace. God made Jesus to be seen, who knew no sin, that I may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have dominion over sin. Sin can never dominate me. I reign in this life over sin. Do you believe it? Declare with me, I reign in this life over sickness and disease. I reign in this life over sickness and disease. He himself took my infirmities 
and bore my sicknesses. The chastisement for my well-being was laid on him, and by his stripes I'm healed. Heaven hear me, earth hear me, hell hear me, by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. I'm a well man. I reign in this life over sickness and disease. I lay hands on the sick and they recover, and they recover from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, I permit no sickness, I permit no disease, I reign in this life over sickness and disease. Do you believe it? Declare with me, I reign in this life through Jesus Christ over poverty and lack. Declare it again. Like you mean it. Through Jesus Christ, over poverty and lack. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord Jesus Christ is my shepherd. I shall not lack. I reign in this life. Over poverty and lack. For I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That even though he was rich. Yet for my sake. He was made poor. That I, through his poverty, might be made rich. I reign in this life over poverty and lack. Poverty and lack, you can never reign around me. I dominate you and I command you, pack your bag and baggage, out you go. In the name of Jesus. I reign in this life over poverty and lack. For Jesus came and gave me life and gave me life more abundantly. And God is able to cause all grace to abound towards me. That I always have enough sufficiency. In all things, we have abundance for every good work. I reign in this life over poverty and lack. My God supplies all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Do you believe it? Say with me, I reign in this life. Over circumstances. For I walk by faith and not by sight. I walk by faith, not by circumstances. I walk by faith, not by sight. I reign in this life over circumstances. I am born of God. He that is born of God overcomes the world. I overcome the world. And this is my victory that overcomes the world. Even my faith. I reign over circumstances. In all circumstances. My God is able. My God is able. I reign in this life through Jesus Christ. In all of these things, I am more than a conqueror. In every circumstance, I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor tell him I reign in this life through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Praise the Lord. All right. You may be seated. Look at, uh, let's take some scriptures and then just do some exhortation. Psalm 50 verse 23. I will never forget this psalm. There is a reason. This very verse of, the, of Psalm 50. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. God is saying. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, therefore by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. The sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. So when you see a tree and it bears fruit, do you see the fruit? Do you see the fruit? Do you see the fruit? Huh? Okay. By their fruits, we shall know them. Oh, many trees can look the same. But their fruits distinguish them. From afar, many trees look the same. But when you come and see the fruit, even when they are alike, you can distinguish between mango and pear. Right? 
Okay? Now, in thanksgiving, God expects our lips to bear fruit. The, your lips bear fruit when they make audible sound. Either intelligent or you're praying in the spirit and offering thanks through the Holy Spirit. But in thanksgiving, in the sacrifice of praise, your lips must form words. There is nothing like you're thanking somebody and it's inside you. There is a heart of gratitude. But when you, gratitude must be expressed in words. Are you here? Eh? You can't give somebody something and the person keeps silent and walks away with the treasure you gave him. And you ask him, but he didn't even say thank you. He said inside me, I said thank you. It doesn't work. And before God, it doesn't work by these scriptures. The Bible says we should proclaim his goodness in the congregation of the saints. Other places he said we should declare his faithfulness in the great congregation. Let people know what God has done. If you check your life every season, there is a reason to thank God and praise him. There is a reason. Are you here? So, but your lips must bear fruit. It must bear fruit. As I'm speaking, my lips are bearing fruit. You can hear me. Are you hearing me? So when we are talking of thanksgiving, speak it, let your neighbor hear it. Speak it, fill the atmosphere with the voice of triumph, with the voice of rejoicing and thanksgiving in the presence of God. It's not a heart. A heart of grat gratitude leads to thanksgiving and praises. But your praises must be heard. Our God likes noise. Make a joyful noise in the midst of his people. Our God likes noise. They always complain Pentecostals are noisy. It's not our fault. That's what our God demands. Then, Luke 17, if you don't know where Luke is, then you look. From verse 11, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, that's Jesus Christ, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of, of Samaria and Galilee. Then, as he entered a certain village, they are meeting ten men who were lepros, lepers. Ten men who were lepers. Ten. They are meeting ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When we are in need, we cry unto God, and that's in order. James 5.13 it says, is any man afflicted? Let him pray. So in their affliction, they cried unto the Lord. In their affliction, they cried out to the Lord. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Then, when the Lord gives you a good result... He expects thanksgiving and praise to his own name. That's all you can offer him. He expects thanksgiving, gratitude from us. The Bible says it's the praise due to his name. It's his due. It's his right. It's his right. In that James 5 13, he said, is anyone afflicted? Let him pray. Is anyone merry? Let him sing psalms. When you're happy, when God has done something for you, sing. Give him thanks. Form the words of praise and thanksgiving. Glorifying him. When you are in affliction, you cry to him. When you're happy, when he has done it, praise his name. When our children were small. There was a day I asked you to be, what do you like most about God? He said, it's when you, he answers your prayer. <laughs> when they were very small. He said, it's when he answers your prayer. When he answers your prayer, express gladness. He, said, he says, come before me with rejoicing. Are you hearing me? Show gladness. Show joy that your God is good. That your father is good. 
Psalm 34 verse 8 says, Oh, test and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. When you test it and you've seen that God is good, express joy and gladness and gratitude before him. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And, and so it was as they went. They were cleansed. The leprosy disappeared from each one of them. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, thanking him over and over again. When that man at the gate, beautiful in Acts chapter 3, was healed, when he saw, saw that I can walk, I mean, I, you see, the challenges of man never cease. Are you hearing me? Eh? It never ceases. After, um, uh, what was that um, former prime minister of South Africa, the one that handed over to Mandela, Frederick what? Eh? Uh, Fred de Clark. When he was handing over he to, to Mandela, he told him something. He said, after one mountain, there is always another mountain to climb. Are you here? Eh? You, you, you're first praying, God, I, I need a wife, I need a husband. When he shows you, you're not praying for money to wed. After money to wed, eh, to set up home, you're praying. Eh, the things you need in here. After that, you're praying for children. After When the children come, you're praying for school fees. It will not end. And then... I found out there is another project. After they finished in school, to pray that they might rewrite. It's a big project. So it, and when they marry, you are not praying for grandchildren. The, <laughs> the demands of man, women, women stay at home and are dreaming about Omugo. I'm telling you, they're dreaming about it as if he's So, always pause. The psalm we say, Selah. Always take pauses and give God thanks. The challenge, the, the demands, the needs will always be there. There will be fresh needs. After your first car. So, at some point, the first car was a prayer point, maybe. At some point, you need a replacement. It's another prayer point. It doesn't stop. So if you're waiting for when all your challenges, every problem will be solved before you give God thanks, you will never be a grateful person. Pause, seller, to give God thanks. Pause. When he has done it, thank him. When you're expecting it, thank him. Live a life of gratitude. So this, one of them returned when he saw that he was healed. That was verse what? Verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned to Jesus. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, that crippled at gate, beautiful. The moment he saw he was healed, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And, he, and they helped him, his feet received strength. He was jump. He was all over the place. You could know something happened in his life. Walking and leaping and praising the Lord, the Bible says. Is that our story? After this one, you're crying for the next thing. You have not thanked. After this year, you're talking of another year. You have not thanked him for this year. And everything here. Believe me, God has been faithful this year. A lot has been achieved this year. A lot. A lot. This was a very fruitful year. A lot has been achieved this year. So, he returned and was praising, giving thanks to Jesus. Verse 17. So, Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? Was there not ten people that were cleansed? Of course, he knew the others were cleansed too. Jesus knew. But we are denying no gratitude, 
no return to give thanks. We are there are not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner. And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Father, once again, we thank you for the privilege of fellowshipping with you and with one another. Thank you for your word, your revelation to us. Thank you for the entrance of your word brings light, gives us light and gives us understanding. Give us both light and understanding this morning. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy word. We are strangers on earth. Hide not your commandments from us. Open our hearts. Unlock our hearts in thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. If you are going to grow, if you are going to grow in your leadership, in your status, you have to come to the point where you will not, there will be no excuses for failure. Rather, prepare to tell us how you succeeded against all odds. Are you hearing me? Tell us how you succeeded in the face of failures, our opportunities for failures. Tell us how you brought down Goliath in spite of the mismatch. Are you hearing me? Not why you couldn't confront him. Like Saul, where they were there weighing his spear, weighing his shield. How did they know the weights? Did they put them in a bag? They were looking at it. They were estimating everything. Tell us how you brought down Goliath in spite of his size. Not why you didn't succeed, eh? because your father didn't do this one, your mother didn't do that one, your uncle also added. Nonsense. Some of us are so privileged that our parents gave us education. In some of our families, I, I, I look at things and observe things, and every leader should be an, every leader should be an observer. You should observe things. Our father, my father succeeded against all odds in the midst of his brethren. He, he self-educated himself, reading at home. All that Cambridge, Junior Cambridge, Senior, he at home. He didn't go to second, he developed himself from home. Doing all kinds of odd things to pay school fees and all that. And his influence was very large in his domain. His name was a password against all odds. But then they gave us the privilege of a better education and better opportunities. But even at that, some of the children that these parents that succeeded against all odds raised, in our hands, the standard went down. For, for some of the children. Why? We are supposed to have climbed on their shoulders to reach higher heights. So you should go beyond where your father went and stop giving them excuses. Excuses. Excuses are very cheap. I keep telling, just as cheap as criticism. Cheap. And then ingratitude. Then he said, look for a reason. Look for something that you will use to count God faithful in your situation. At every station in life, you can see the hand of God, his signature in something that is happening to you. If you're careful to look, little things he keeps doing to let you know I'm there. I'm there. I'm with you. It, the going can be tough, but then when he does those little things, the timing makes you know. So God is in this, is in this place, and I didn't know it like Jacob. So God is in this place, and I didn't know it. He never leaves his own. And he never sleeps nor slumbers. Then he said, build a culture of gratitude into yourself and your family. 
You have to keep encouraging your children in the faith and in relating with God the right way. That's a project we will never graduate from as long as we are living. My mother still, I, there are certain things I want to come up. I ask her, look at this situation. How do I handle it? Especially things that have to do with the, with the kindred and some other things. You know, they ask, I ask her, look at this situation. What do you think of it? I ask her up to her, she's 89 years. Next year, she will be 90. And God has kept her intellect and wisdom intact. She remembers things that happened 50 years ago and so on. She will tell you what happened. You ask her, she will recall. It's few things that you ask her. You say, I can't even remember the details of that. Now, and this is, is, that's even at her level. That's, that's, that happens at times. Look for a reason. Look for something that you will use to count God faithfully in your situation. Build a culture of gratitude into yourself and your family. He talked of the five foolish virgins. He said the bridegroom was mad at them for the lack of preparation. We, his assignment was to prepare us for thanksgiving. Amos said, prepare to meet your God. It takes preparation to meet God. Prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. He said in the economy of heaven, people, do not, who, people who do not prepare, God does not take them serious. Then he said, when God lifts you, lift yourself. When you're giving him your offerings... Are they just reporting that you're doing well? Or are they saying, oh, well, it's God saying, son, I've blessed you more than this now. Do you know it happens? Why do you think Jesus was interested in the offerings that day? He was interested in seeing what everybody was giving. And that's how he saw what that widow gave that day. He said it too might. She, she dropped into that offering bowl. And Jesus knew that that's all she had. She, when, when they finished, Jesus said that this woman has given more than everybody that is here. That from her lack, that she gave all she, her, she had, all her living. He was watching them as they were dropping. God is, you hear me say, God is interested in your good thing too. Not just in your problems and uh, your needs. God is interested in your appreciation, in your thanksgiving. God is interested in your good things. He's interested in you, giving him his tithe from the income he's giving you. Some people think to give God the tithe, the tenth. He gives you 200,000 naira. You give him 20,000 for tithe. That's the foundation of things. It's not the ultimate. That's the foundation. Lay a, foundation, a covenant foundation for something that will last. If not, you see, the, there are ways we attract. Even when you're growing, you find out that if you're not a covenant person, the devil can introduce reproach or shame to you through any means. Are you hearing me? One of the things, at the, when they were circumcised at Gilgal, what God said when they were circumcised there in the wilderness, God said, today I've rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. That covenant rolls away the shame of your former life. Walk in covenant. Obey God. Don't use your, your own thing. If God says, give him your tithe. That, he said the tithe is not, is the laws. It's not your own. Give it to him. Then you can build your offerings and your generosity after you have laid a good foundation. You can move from 10% to 20 to 15 to 20. You grow and you see God lifting you still. If you're crying about 10%, you're still a child. Very, I, I can demonstrate it here. If you get a pack of biscuits, and give it to a child, yes. Some children, some children are generous, but not all of them. Children tend to be selfish. How many of you know? Huh? Get a pack of biscuits, whether it's coaster. That biscuit, no cost. So give it to the child and say, okay, open it and give me one piece. He will hide it behind him. That's what many people do with the tithes. God gives you 10, 100 naira. Say, give me 10 naira. It's my own, out of the, it's my own covenant 
right in that thing. You say no. Uh, to give you 10 pounds. It's too much. Eh? Look at tiny you that God can stop your breath now. And people are there allowing people to confuse them. When you're in need, when you're in problem, those people that confuse you won't be there to help you. Everybody tithes. <laughs> I remember a brother, General Emmanuel, one day he was ministry. He said everybody tithes. It's either you tithe to God or you tithe it to the devil when he brings problems. I remember a brother that wasn't tithing in those days. <laughs> so I shared that testimony. That was not in Olivet. I shared that testimony with Pastor Oko when we were speaking during the week. We spoke yesterday for over one hour. Uh, when I, I took over a church there, yeah. one day during the offering, I noticed that the treasurer of the church, the deaconess, who was the treasurer, during the offering and tithes, uh, when people were dropping their tithes and offering, she left her seat and went to another brother. There was, you know, there was a way they were talking to each other. It was like there was something. So after something, I asked, I said, I noticed what you people were doing. What happened? He said, Brother Susan, so pay tithe too. He said, Brother Susan. I said, doesn't he pay tithe? He said, no. That when the poor my pastor was here, that you preach on tithe and tithe and they call his name. Say, you, the next time you eat your tithe, you will die. The brother will sit there and say, Amen. And he will still eat it. Then he had a good work, but it wasn't showing on him. He had a good business, but it wasn't showing on him. He will have contract to furnish like a hotel and all, but it, it wasn't showing on him and reflecting on his family. Then after one contract, he bought one vehicle, one SUV. Only to discover the engine was rotten. <laughs> when I told Oko, he said he has paid tight. <laughs> you know? I don't want to put myself in a precarious position. Um, some people will tell you there's nothing like heaven or hell. I don't want to take that risk. What if you close your eyes and don't open them again and realize there is a hell? God does not lie. Disaster is disaster no matter when it comes. Whether old age or youth, disaster is disaster. If you are not a sower in Nigeria today, I don't know what, you have, what plan you have to survive. If, you, if you're not working in covenant with God and you're not hearing from him and you're not obeying him, I don't know what your plan of survival is so. Jagba is not the solution when you're disobeying God. Go and ask Jonah. Are you here? Go and ask Jonah in the Bible. It's not the solution when you're disobeying God. The God of the mountain is God of the valley. He's God even in the desert. What he can do in the U.S., he can do here. But when you, he gives you the opportunity, that's, that's good. But even if you go to the U.S., it's yourself you're taking there. If you're a disobedient person, it's yourself you're taking. Unless you change, certain things will not change. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you here? It's yourself you're taking wherever you go. There was a time I started I, I, my covenant offering. I... Patterned it after $100 in Naira. What's your plan or strategy to survive if you're not serious with God? If you're not in covenant with him, that gives confidence. That's why Abraham said, I will not take any of these things you people are offering me. It's not tomorrow you said you made Abraham rich. He knew that his wealth would come from God and was coming from God. He had confidence. So remain sensitive in your heart. Our culture is here that I try to inculcating us is to give willingly. I, I don't like, it. I don't want to lead people in a way that when they're doing something, it's like I coerce them to do it. You, if I coerce you or corner you to do something, I will use that money, we will use it and do things in the church. But you may not be blessed by it because you didn't give it willingly. It's like I service on your part. It's when you give God from your heart. Your heart, your mouth, your hands must coordinate properly in your givings. I mentioned about praying over tithes in the other time. There was a, a time I designed a small card 
that I wanted to pass around. We wanted to print it, but we eventually we didn't print it. Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, why don't you do something? Show us how to pray about Titan. I said I was looking for this, and she, he said he has been able to dig it out. So I will, that prayer for Titan, so that you know how to pray about some things. It doesn't mean you must recite those words, but there is a way to pray about it. So that your mouth and your heart and your hands are working in agreement. If what is in your heart, what God laid in your heart to give to him, the best offerings are the ones God demands from you. You know the Holy Spirit is leading me to this thing, to, to do this thing. The Bible says, is it um, in Hebrews 9.14, that Jesus, through the eternal spirit, offered himself to God. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, he offered himself. When you offer in consonance with the dealing of the Holy Spirit in your heart, that's when you, the, the, the result is best. When you have obeyed, you have followed the Holy Spirit, and he will orchestrate what he said to do. That's why I tell you, when the Spirit of God is telling you, or when God is speaking to you to do something, even in the church, don't fail to do it. If you fail to do it, he raised another person to do that same thing. He has options before he chose you. Are you here? Are you here? He had options before he chose you. If you don't do it, he will raise another person. You will be surprised at who he raised to do it. But he gave you the first opportunity to do it. So make it a thanksgiving indeed. Luke 11. Uh, 17, verse 11, 10 lepers we are healed. Jesus gave them instruction, go and show yourself to the priest. No leper goes to the priest to show himself unless he's healed or he suspects he's healed. Then you go to the priest, he'll confine your healing and then he put you through a rite of purification. And then you're restored back to society. When he said, he told them, go show yourself to, be, to the priest, he said, act like you're healed. That's what he was telling them in effect. Are you here? Are you here? So if you're sick in your body, you've seen the word of God. That's, the word of God is your, uh, his revelation to you. There's no way I would have known that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. If not, that I read it in the Bible. Do you understand that? So God revealed it to me through this written word. A more sure word of prophecy. So one of the ways to receive healing is to act like the word of God is true. I'm healed by his stripes. Act it. Act it. Where you couldn't walk, take a walk. But the Bible says I, I'm, I'm healed by his strife. Take a walk. Do something with that part of your body that you couldn't do before. Acting on the word of God. Paul, uh, Peter said, uh, Paul, uh, Jesus told Peter, cast your net in, uh, in the deep and you will catch. He said, we have fished all night and caught nothing. There is nothing in this water you are seeing. But never, he said, nevertheless, at your word, because you say so, I will do it. So he acted on the word of Jesus and cast his net as if he was going to have a great draught of fish, like Jesus said. And he had a great draught of fish. You see, things are different when God is the one telling you to do it. Things are different. Simple instructions will bring supernatural results when you're acting on divine instructions. It's not the same. If one of Peter's colleagues had told him to cast his net in that same place, nothing would have happened. Are you here? Eh? Nothing would have happened. But when God says it, when he said, Peter, Peter said, Can I? if it's you, they, were, they saw a man walking to, they were in the midst of a storm. Everywhere was dark. They were tossed and distressed. Then they saw a figure walking on water towards them. They thought it's a spirit. They were screaming their phantasma, phantasma, spirit, spirit. He says, ghost, he says, ghost. He just said, it's not a ghost, it's me. And then Peter said, struggling in the boat, he said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on water. He said, if it's you, come on. Why didn't he step out on his own until Jesus said so? Are you here? Then Jesus told him, come. Jesus told him what? Come. In that command, in that instruction come, is the ability and the anointing to fulfill it. So he walked on water. 
And then when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. And he cried, Lord, save me. And so Jesus held out his hand and held him. And the two of them walked on water into the boat. So Peter walked on water two times. Going and returning. <laughs> Have you walked on water? He said, hey, Peter began to sink. Peter walked on water. You've not walked on water. He acted on the word of Jesus. When God says do it, it's a different ball game altogether. When you're sure God said go, go. It's well. No matter what they're saying, go. It's going to be well. And if any situation arises, their God will show up like the fourth man in the fire. Anyone here? It's a season. To, so one of them, when he saw, when they were going, ten of them all were healed. Nine walked away. One went back to Jesus and began to thank him. Maybe he told the others, let's go back to him. He said, well, what for? We are healed now. We are healed. Maybe he talked to them because they were walking together. They were going together. They were a gang. You know, these people, beggars, moving gangs and all those people at times. You know, so he must have told them, let's go. Let's go and thank this man. They said, what are we thanking him for? We are well now. We are well. We are well. They went home. This one returned and came to Jesus. Fell down there and was thanking him with a loud voice, shouting. Do you know what it means for a leper to be cleansed? A leper is an anathema. An accosting. He returned and gave thanks. Now he walked. Look at the 10%. He swore gratitude Jesus got. 10%. Count yourself amongst the 10% that will be grateful. Okay, so make it a thanksgiving offering indeed between you and God. Let it come from your heart. We want it to be a willing offering. I don't need to possess a skyscraper before I thank God and praise him. He said in everything, give thanks. First Thessalonians 5.18 For that is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks. Even when there is... You see, um, one of our pastors, we know his house got burnt. I don't want to take the census. So I, I would have asked how many of us stretched forth a hand of help towards him, no matter what it is. Some did, but others, you know, concern them. But these are the people that bless you every day in the year. Others, you know, concern you. But that's one of your pastors. When they are in need, you leave them alone. When your pastor is sick, nobody calls. I'm not praying to be sick. That's, that's it. I know some people that did some things. But some, for some others, hmm, even when I encourage you here, do it. Hmm. But he, I was discussing with him last week. He said, I, I was oh, the week before last. He said, do I know that before that thing happened, that God was dealing with him and telling him, you see all these material things, they are nothing, forget them. Forget it. And that he was reading Matthew 6 over and over again. And that Sunday, I preached from Matthew 6, talking about all these things, you know, he, that he was reading it over and over again. Over and again. But he didn't know what was coming. So God knew in advance. God had prepared him in advance. And one phase is over. A more glorious phase will emerge in his life and family. That's the working of God. If you walk with him, you never walk alone. You never walk alone. Opportunities like that, those are opportunities to do good. Opportunities to do good. And some people, hey, who knows who he did sin he committed? <laughs> I'm sorry for you. You see, if you never suffer adversities in your life, then your faith is not being tried. Right. That means that I think you're very close to the devil. I'm suspecting you. If the devil doesn't harass you, that means I think there is, you people are working together somehow. I'm suspecting you. Ask your neighbor, are you a suspect? Why, do, why is it that he never harasses you? How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> if you're working against him, he will harass you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In everything, give thanks. In every situation, there is a reason to give thanks. God demands it. 
Now, the first and the best preparation for 2024 is to thank God for 2023. Did you hear me? The first and best preparation for 2024 is to thank God for 2023. And the best conclusion for 2023 is to thank God for all he did for you, for your family, for us, for Olivet Bible Church, for Nigeria, and on, for, in 2023. Start with yourself. Count your blessings. Count the movements forward. Count the challenges surmounted. Count the needs met. Difficult situations that he, he overcame on your behalf. Then, I said it, a culture we want to build here is for people to give willingly. Willing offering. This is the culture we want to promote here. So let's look at the, some scriptures. Offer willingly, not as forced, not because pastor said it. Offer willingly. You know, <laughs> the brother Oko set me up last week. He was talking about a, a young man that sold a shoe and then he's have, he has many shoes now. Pastor's shoes. He says he has about five. That the mother said he has about five pastors. I was wondering which one is Pastor's shoes. I said, he said, I asked him, so when he kept saying it, I said, so which one is Pastor's shoes? He said, that one, you, like that one you're wearing. <laughs> they will always come. You see this one I'm wearing. <laughs> so may God give you a shoe like Pastor's own. But maybe you need to sew a shoe. I didn't, know, I didn't know that's what that man would do. <laughs> okay, Exodus 25, verses 1 and 2. Exodus 25, verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. What you bring willingly from your heart. Leviticus 22, verse 29. Willingly. Tell them they prepare. So what happened? When Moses, Moses told them, okay, these are the things God wants as offering. So they took that instruction home, went, went home, digested it, prayed over it, and then they came back bringing those offerings as they proposed in their hearts. And when you offer a sacrifice of thanks given to God, Offer it of your own free will. Are you here? Yes, Let it be from your heart. Not because somebody said it or did not say it. Somebody can guide you and you realize, okay, this is what I ought to have been doing. Are you hearing me? But let it be from your heart. Let it be a willing, something you, you, you'd settled in your heart. Let's do this. Okay? Psalm 107, verse 21 and 22. Psalm 107, 21 and 22. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Come with rejoicing. Come with joy. Come with joy. So let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. 2 Corinthians 9 from verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9 from verse 6. It's worth it thanking God. It's worth it. It's worth it. You see, when David built his house, he said, when David finished building his own personal house, he said, look at, I'm now dwelling in a house of cedars. And the, the ark of God is still, which was the presence of God, is still dwelling in a tent. He has just dedicated his personal house. He was thinking, what do I do concerning the house of God? That's a kingdom mindset. What do I do? He said, I'm here, comforted in this comfort. The ark of God is still dwelling in a tent. Then he began to think, but God told him, he said, okay, I'm going to build a house for God. But God intercepted him. And said, you will not build it. You've been a man of war too long. Say, your hands are full of blood. You've shed so much blood. That's the way God put it. He said, your son will build it.
He said, but because you thought this way, this is what I'm going to do for you. Because you had it in your heart. This is what I'm going to do for you. But some of us build a house of cedars and care little about the house of God dwelling in a tent. I'm not preaching building. When I told, like I told you, when I'm ready, I'll let you know we, we, we build. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart. This is new covenant. Are you hearing me? Settle it in your heart. That's where the Spirit of God dwells. When it comes from there, it's born of the Holy Spirit. But So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Give with rejoicing, with smiles on your face, with joy reflecting and radiating from you. So let each one give, okay? And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work, empowered for everything God wants you to do. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the soul and bread for food, Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness, and so on and so forth. So he says, come with rejoicing. Come with a dance. Come with shouts of praise. Don't come gloomy. It's a sacrifice of praise. Are you hearing me? It's a sacrifice of praise. Come like one that God has blessed. Blessed your family, done something for you, kept you alive, healed you, delivered you. From all kinds of harms and accidents and destructions that the devil planned. Come before his presence with singing. Come with an offering, with your hands full. Psalm 95, verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Psalm 100. Okay. Make a joyful noise. Let's, okay, say this after me. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Enter his presence. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And his cause with praise. Be thankful to him. And bless his name. Amen. So come with rejoicing. Come with your sacrifice of praise. Come with the fruit of your lips, giving thanks to him. Come as before a good God, a merciful God, a gracious God, to offer him thanksgiving for a whole year. A whole year of protection, of provision, of blessing, feeding us, clothing us, giving us money, blessing our children, blessing our families, keeping our parents for a whole year, keeping us in Nigeria. If Nigeria had blown up, some, maybe some wouldn't be alive today. God will do what he will, he will do in this land. And it's those that trouble us that we pay for it with their blood. They're pushing people too far in this country. And God will judge them severely. They, they are not far from it. Their cup is virtually full now. But God has kept us in our going out, in our coming in. When we fly in the air, when we go on ground, God has, even some use water, go on boats and all these things. And God keeps us. A lot of our children has kept our children, giving us intelligent children. Do you know what it means to, if you have a child that 
No matter the school fees you pay, even if you pay one million uh, uh, naira a term for the school fees, the child will come back with a failed uh, result, with failure in his result. Do you know the frustration of such parents? <laughs> one, one pastor, a, a, young, a younger pastor than myself, then he, he was the only child of the mother. So he would go to school and fail. When he would fail in school, he would be crying. He would, they would give him, those days, they would call the results in the open. He will be crying home. And then they, they will, why, why are you crying? He said, they said I failed. They said I failed. He said, let me see your report card. She will look at it and see that the child, that he, her child failed. He said, who said you failed? It's me that will say whether you failed or not. You passed. You passed. Don't mind them, my son. You passed. He failed, though. <laughs> he said, it was when he grew up, his father, his mother was <laughs> just saying, uh, boy, hey, let's stand. Let's stand. It's worth it giving God thanks. It's worth it giving God thanks. Let's stand, stretch yourself. Ask God for, to prepare your heart for the thanksgiving. Ask God to prepare your heart for the thanksgiving.